Hey guys, before we jump into this episode today, we just want to give a big shout out to Isaac, one of our younger subscribers, and he's turning five this weekend. So happy birthday, Isaac, from Dean, myself, and Twyla, and hope you have a great weekend and enjoy your special day. And his mum even says that every time they go on a road trip, he's always looking out the window looking for our van. So just keep looking because one day you'll see us on the road. All right, let's get into this episode. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm King Dino. I'm Adam, this is Twyla. And we are in... Murtala. I'm glad you said that, Adam, because I don't think I could pronounce it properly. And um, first things first, we need some petrol, so we're going to go grab some petrol. Oh, diesel. Diesel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Imagine if I did that, then that would be the end of our holiday. And Murtala <laughs> is on the west side of Victoria. So yes. So not far from Horsham. Yes. We've been trying to chase um, the sun, and it's led us to here. So anyway, let's go start this episode and uh, show you Murtala. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're at the petrol station. It's and it's not manned. It's not manned. It's not diesel. Is it even open? Oh, it's prepaid. <laughs> okay. They've got prepaid machine here, so that's good. Diesel is oh relatively cheap. How much? Two dollars eight. Two dollars yeah. So purchase fuel. We're purchasing fuel. Available <laughs> diesel. Alright. BP, yep, card. How card. much do we need? Preset amounts. Ooh. Well, how much is it? Two dollars. So we're gonna get a whole tank. How much? We got half a tank. Yeah, half a tank. So. And they'll refund the difference. I'm assuming. Oh, Maximum well. amount ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Um, do. do you BP? No. Skip. Insert or tap. All right. Well, I'll leave you to do that, and I'll go over and start filling up. So they send you the receipt by email. Oh, there you go. Mm. All right. Well, let's head off. Welcome to Matoa Caravan Park. Hopefully I've pronounced that right. This is probably going to be one of the quickest caravan park tours I've ever shown you guys. It's only a small park, but the view is to die for. So let's go check out their facilities and their accommodation. So there you have it. That is the caravan park. I told you, it's only tiny, but it's fantastic. I mean, look at this view. And we've picked this site up, a powered site for $25. Obviously, depending on the season and the rest of it, I don't know if those prices change. So please check ahead of time. Um, but look at our spot, beautiful spot. And our back doors will open up onto the lake. Uh, so we're gonna have a beautiful view tonight, the sun going down and even better check out this track it goes all the way around this lake so we're going to head into town now and maybe in the morning we will well we're going to walk part, part of this now then we'll go into town and in the morning i might attempt to walk around the whole lake uh probably by myself because you know what adam does in the morning sleeps i'll just talk while adam feeds his face but we we thought we'd take a walk into town like i said <laughs> hey. oh now, there are a lot of mozzies. We've sprayed. We're now in windsheeters, even though I'm too hot to be in one. I just wiped one off these. Sure. And he just killed another one. So, there are a lot of mosquitoes, but the upside is, it's just a beautiful place. So anyway, let's head on into town and check it out. Oh, before that, let's throw the drone up and see if we can get a good view.
don't know the, his, the full history about this place, but um, it is absolutely gorgeous pub. And um, here's an old photo, if you can see it, the reflection's really strong. But um, everyone, back in the day, how gorgeous is that? And um, I was just peeking through the window, because it's not open, obviously, at the moment, so no one, I don't know who owns it, but if you can see inside, look how gorgeous it looks. So nice. What, Adam? Um, I don't know how it's gonna work with reflection. But yeah. You can put the camera up against, look at the stained glass above that door. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, that looks awesome. Oh, well, do we wanna buy a pub, Adam? Uh, Comment down below if you'd come to our pub. Work. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> uh, working full time running a YouTube channel, is that enough? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we're back from our walk around town. It was really cute, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, the mozzies back. The mozzies are back, but besides our dirty windows, this is a view we've got from our back of our van tonight. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Just watching the sun go down. So I'm just debating if I want to go out there and watch the sunset with the mozzies or not, or sit behind the glass, the dirty glass. <laughs> So tonight, I'm not going to keep this long-winded. We're having Thai bread curry. We've used these packs before. They're awesome. They come with everything you need. Now, tonight I really wanted a barbecue, but nothing was open. Hey, Adam. No. Um, so this literally comes with all your herbs and stuff. It's so simple. Don't be turned off by the fact that it has all these different pieces, including your, um, uh, what's this called, Adam? This is... Uh, Cream, coconut, cream. coconut cream like everything just and you can put it in your pantry and just keep it there till you need it but anyway so this is what we're having adam's gonna whip it up how long is it gonna be adam 15 minutes 15 minutes all right let's go time is on so there you have it Thai is ready. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Adam. That's okay. <laughs> and I think someone's just woken back up mm. from being very tired. And uh, she might get some chicken. Yeah. Well, you have to get all the juice off it because mm. you can't have Thai chicken, Twyla. Mm. You can have the chicken, but that's it. Mm. Anyway, TV's working. Ariel isn't up, so that's awesome. So you can be here. Don't have to put your reel up. TV tuned in straight away, and that's always a winner. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Well, we've woken to a cloudy day, but we're up and we're ready to go. But before we leave, I thought we'll cook cook a quick breakfast now we don't normally have power in our van when we're out free camping but because we're at this caravan park we do have power and we do have a microwave so i'm going to whip up a really quick easy breakfast that you can do next time you've got power and you're away so i've just cracked four eggs salt and pepper and then i'm going to chuck a little bit of milk in now if you're wondering what i'm making i'm making scrambled eggs in the microwave into the microwave it goes then what you want to do is after about a minute and a half of cooking, just give it a stir through and then pop it back now, in. This is how it should look when it comes out of the microwave. It's still a little bit wet in the middle. And then you give it a good mix and you're going to have scrambled eggs. And there you have it. That is my scrambled eggs cooked in just a few minutes. All ready for Adam. Are you ready, Adam? I, I wouldn't know it. I'm just going to chuck my ear. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. There you go. Nice and fresh. Look at that. You can do these at home even, hey? Cute. Well, we do, don't Actually, we? Actually, we need a knife. Okay. Well, enjoy. Bon appetit. How good is it waking up to this view? So beautiful. But anyway, we're gonna head down to a cafe now, grab ourselves a coffee, and then we've got a 1K walk to the stick shed. So we're gonna go check that out. It's meant to be really good. Sit 
just got to Wild Duck Cafe, Twyla, you're sitting, being a good girl. And we just got some takeaway coffees because we're walking to the, um, where are we walking to? The, uh, the stick shed. The stick shed. And um, Adam's picked us up two of these. What are these? The uh, orange puppy seed. Mini Orange puppy seed mini cupcakes. muffins. How? Or muffins, cupcakes, whatever. But yummo, mm -hmm. they look good. You have to let us know what you think of the uh, cupcake. Mm. Yummy? Mm -hmm. Nice and sweet. But I think it's a good size. Yeah. Because we've already had breakfast before, just a moment ago. Yeah, sometimes you just want something small, don't you? Mm. It's yummy. So, as you probably already know, we left the van at the caravan park. And it's such a good idea because it's only a quick walk to the stick shed. Um, probably how long do you reckon? 10 minutes? Oh, ah, yeah, it's like it's, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? And, um, and just seeing all the beautiful old houses is just a bit of an eye opener in itself and um, beating people along the way as well. But we are here now at the stick shed. So we're about to go in, but I will film it as we walk up towards it because. The vast size of this building is just incredible. And I really don't know if filming it, um, you'll, you'll, it'll capture how big this place actually is. Because the photos that I've seen, I go, oh yeah, it's okay, it's big, yeah, maybe. But it is huge. So this there, you can see how massive it is. A few uh, caravans here also, hey? Yeah. So this is, the stick shed is a length of five Olympic swimming pools. Five. I don't know what that is, but and, it's a length of five. <laughs> and six, six uh, stories high, they say? Oh, I think it's... I reckon it's bigger. Yeah, I think it's bigger. I've read somewhere between, around six stories high, but it looks more than nah, six stories. Nah, that looks bigger than six. Wow. Anyway, we'll go inside and see the facts. Um, they've got a few old carriages from, a tr uh, from trains over here. Um, we've seen a few of these go past while we've been here already. Um, and then this group of uh, bikies uh, just all pulled up and went past us. Twyla had a bit of a bark. And, um, yeah, we don't know if we don't have don't know if dogs can go in, but we'll just take it in turns otherwise. And then um, I just wanted to quickly show you, just because you know who we are. Check out these vans. Nice new van. There's another one. Oh yeah, they were there just yeah, yeah. this morning. They were packing up. Yeah, they were, they were in our caravan park. So there you go. They've all come down here. Oh yeah, these six stories. This, uh, six stories. Yep. Six. There you go. There's some. Oh, bottom ones and where's bottom ones? Yeah. Tower and the stick shed. Brain is central to the story of Matoa, and the stick shed signifies a part of this story. A story that depicts both the impact of World War II on Australia's trade and export industry and the transformation of grain haulage in Australia. Matoa is a proud wheat belt town that was settled in 1872 with Lake Marma as the centrepiece and the railway central to trade and employment. The stick shed is a grain storage facility known as Matoa Number One Grain Store. It was built over four months between September 1941 and January 1942 and filled with grain within six months of construction. So you can see how big it is right here. And Adam and Ty are going to walk in now. He's friendly so Twyla can go in, she can be on the ground or she can be picked up, whatever you like.
So we've pretty much got this place to ourselves. There's only a handful of people. Definitely, probably a tip is to come during the week if you can, mm. because I'm sure this place would be packed on the weekends and you can get some really nice photos in here. Yeah, with, And it looks like no one's in here. Yeah, and I think obviously, obviously depending on the time of day, you know, we're now here around the midday mark, so the sun's coming through with the skylights. Um, yep. You know, you might get the evening sun, may cast shadows and make it interesting. Um, but yeah, there's options for you. There's 57 pillars in this main um, Well, there's more space. than 50, so oh, well, in, in, yeah, yeah, so a long, going long, there's, yeah, 57, so, but yeah, it's incredible. And just like Adam was saying, just the sun shining through um, the old tin roof, it just looks amazing to see all the shadows, shadows of casts. Anyway, fantastic mm -hmm. for photos anyway. And pet friendly. And pet friendly. So anyway, let's head out of here. So Adam, have we set, set if, if we we should give a prize for anyone who does this. I don't know what the prize is, but if you can come here mm -hmm. and find us on a pillar. Yes, yes, which and pillar? And take a photo of which it. Which pillar are we on? <laughs> and send it to us. Messages. Messages. Yeah. But um, I'll give you a clue. Uh, that's that's it. the numeral. That's, that's all, all you're getting. Numeral. That's all you're getting. So come find us. <laughs> Something you don't see every day. But anyway, we just left. That was awesome. And now, we're literally just out the front. There's a sign saying to go to the Water Tower Museum, which is open from 12 to 2. So we're just going to head down there now. Father's name was James as well. So I guess he's James Jr. Um, wow. So Adam, where are we? What are we, we looking are at? We are in um, Mertoa, Mertoa Museum, or the Water Tower, the, the old Water, water tower, tower, yeah. which serviced the, uh, across the road there's the railway station. Just um, across, yeah. Which serviced the original railway station. And we have Mr. James Hill, who's English, from England. Yes. Um, and he had, this is over 150, 150 years ago, and he was into taxidermy. Yes. For, sci for, for beauty and for scientific reasons. Yeah. Uh, and he's got like over, so now, over 600 animals in this first floor of the water tower. And the family's donated the collection to them and mm -hmm. you can come in and see them all. So many just, and, and eggs, eggs, birds. Mm -hmm. And there's four levels here. Of, you've got the first floor of the taxidermy, you've got a level of... Um, historical, historical items and uh, yep. kind of artifacts, and then you've got I've gone blank. <laughs> Household items. Household like items yep. as well. So it's definitely worth a visit. Bit of Aboriginal uh, artifacts as well. Fantastic. As well. Original artifacts. So all definitely right. range Well, let's of, go um, check it all out. Items to see. So now we're on the second floor. And I mean, besides seeing everything that's here, the building itself is just amazing. But um, they've got a little bit of... All the old, old buildings in the town before yeah. a few of them got demolished. Yep. So this is a pub that we saw yesterday um, when it was dirt roads. And then this now with the roads. But the guy that owns this has been doing it up and um, they're looking for someone to run it. So if you want to run a pub, come down, grab it. We're 
now on level three with all your uh, household items from years bygone. Look at that TV, you used to have one of them. You can see how thick this metal is, look at that. And how thick these beams are. They would have to be to be able to hold up the water. On the next level, when we head upstairs, we'll see the bottom of the actual water tank. So Adam, look at this. We got some camp ovens. <laughs> Might have been actually walked past them. Yeah. What year are they from? Yeah. And then around here, you got the old press and some more billies and camp ovens and some irons. We'll go to the top floor. Yeah, let's head and up. We'll see the water tower. Well, see the underneath of the water tower. Well, the water tank, the pretty water much. Should you be touching that? <laughs> so, as you can see, we're right under the water tank now. This whole roof is metal and that would have held all that water up there. And you wouldn't want it to fall through, would you? Well, especially not while we're in it. <laughs> it could be iron, actually. Iron? I don't know. Iron? I don't know. Steel? Steel. Is it all the same? No, it's all, yeah, I don't know. Is it all the same? It's, it looks worth going down and going out. Yeah, <laughs> be careful. You can see through the steps. Oh, a bit scary. To be absolutely honest, I think it's more scary coming down the stairs than going up. Just got to watch your head. See? Whoop. So what are we looking at here? So this is the bell tower of the Concordia College of Mertoa. It's like 100 and 120 years it's old. It's gorgeous. Um, but this building beside us is the only remaining um, I guess, structure of that yep. college. Uh, it was transported to Adelaide uh, many, many, many years ago. Yeah. Um, with a lady. We're hoping to meet a lady in there or see a lady in there. She's actually undoing um, lace. Yeah, so it was um, all not really old. And, yeah. Um, she comes in an hour a day to undo this lace. So I hope she's in there. Hopefully she's in there. She might have finished unlacing it after all this time. I doubt it. <laughs> but let's go check it out. Just so it was donated and it was all tangled it up. It was all tangled up when it was donated wow. and no one currently at the museum really knows much about lace. Yes. And, yep. and I went, I know about lace. So um, So how old is this piece of fabric? I'm not sure that I'm well, not sure if there's a notice on on the actual exhibit, there is records of who donated it and when. Yeah. But I'd say it would be a good hundred years old. Wow. Wow. Um, so are you undoing this to fix it up? Yes, because yeah. I just thought yeah, it was yeah. really sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, um, yeah. That it was in such a bad state. So if you come, yeah, yeah, come around yeah, to yeah. the other display. I'm just imagining yeah. these little peg stick things. You need that many. They're called bobbins. Bobbins. Yeah. So you need that many bobbins to Oh yeah. For, that's a, a complicated. Um, Fairly complex. I've got the door open at the moment. Yeah, that's okay. But this is this is one that I've wow. untangled. Normally the cushion would be a lot larger, but yeah, we, we yeah. just can't. It wasn't yeah. with it. It wasn't with it. I've just made a little just a little cushion to um. And that's all untangled. So to make this to go with it to make the lace make, to make wow. that lace obviously in a traditional form with those bobbins. How yep. long would that take someone to? I have no idea. No. <laughs> a while, but yeah. like anything, you would just. Come in from your other chores. Yep. Yep. Spend an hour or two each yep. evening. Yeah. And that's eventually nice. you'll end up yeah. um with a lot. So that's it. This is Amazing. not Wow. So that this is what you get. So the pattern I'm just turning this around. This is the pattern. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's and great. the pins oh. as as you as you're coming forward. Now I can mix it up. <laughs> you'll be doing that again now. I'll yeah. probably straighten that one out. Yeah, but yeah, as, wow. as you go, this rolls forward and you bring the pins 
forward. Oh, forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're weaving through the, as you do the, the The bobbins are usually worked in pairs. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's twist, twist, and then you twist the yep. two middle ones and you come back out. I think this one looks cool. Yes, this looks a bit like, this reminds me of, um, so woodcut. Woodcut, yep. these are all woodcut. Hopefully you can turn them dry up, but we'll give it a go. It's probably the opposite. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit dry. Yeah. So now we've come across the road to the old station. The station. So this is the part that's only been kept. Yep. this main building so it's quite large back in its day but this is like an interchange between adelaide melbourne um back in the bill yep as well <laughs> yep um so all the trains to come through here and you can see you've got the tower just over here yep the which building we were in, in. This. the college which is there as well we've got some of these here So yeah, we're going to go inside. Now this is all part of it. So how much was it to get into so the... So it was $9 for adults. I think so children under 16, I think maybe free. Free, yeah. Um, so that gave us entry to the, uh, to the museum. To there. To the college. This, that. Oh, and quick fact. Near the museum, you see in the ground the white pillar. Yes. Seven. We learned from our, um, from Hugh in, in Avoca. In Avoca, the president of their art uh, and gardens community. Signifies or symbolises the distance between the station and the distance to Spencer Street Station in Melbourne, or now known as Southern Cross. So 187 miles from here yep. to Spencer Street. Well, there you go. There's a bit of history, guys. Lady was saying before in the museum that you yep. can walk over the old rail bridge, which is this crossover. So this crossover here, we're not sure where we're going to get to it, depending on our time. Yeah, but um, the trains would come out and that would spin them around off to different tracks. If you ever a fan of Thomas the Tank Engine, there was one of these in there. <laughs> There's a water tower, and um, yeah, so this is the town and the train, the old how the station used to look. And uh, we might hopefully get to the park where they've got this and walk over it later. So if you're going on a train, you have come through these doors, you'd walk through here, this room, you'd buy a ticket here, and then you'd walk out here to the platform. Good thing is it's all in walking distance, which is great. Now, if you're coming up on the weekend, this railway hotel, is open for meals and it supposedly does really good meals. They're not open today, so yeah, but just definitely check into here if you're um, here in town because there's not too many places to do food in the town. So um, yeah, if you're here on the weekend, have uh, something to eat. So now we're heading into the street that has the IGA. So I was going to see what's open and what's here and might get some food for a barbecue tonight. Oh, we found somewhere to eat. It's right next door to IGA. So I don't know exactly um, the name of the place because uh, <laughs> there's no name on the page. Yeah, no, yeah, no FPOS. And, oh, and there's no FPOS. So know, you've got to make sure you have cash on you. So anyway, I'll show you what we've gone and got to eat. You ready, Twyla? All right, so Adam has got a quiche and this is the Krangsky with bacon and cheese. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. We're just heading back now, but these buildings in this street, some of them are so old. So definitely a place to come have a look at. I mean, it's very interesting to come look at. Well, before I get to not on, I am going to do the challenge of walking around the lake. Now I hear it's only one and a half Ks. It looks bigger, to be honest. And it's meant to be, you're meant to be able to do it in 27 minutes. I'm halfway, I've made it to the other side. One good thing about this town, if you're staying at this caravan park, all you have to do is look for that tower, because that's just a hop, skip and jump 
to where we are staying. So that's the caravan park there, that's the water tower. So you can see that everywhere from the town. Anyway, let's go. Oh, well I did it, I'm back. There's the van. Now I wonder if uh, Adam and Twyla are sleeping. I'm back from my walk. Twyla was staring out the window at another dog and Adam was playing his Tuchuku or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Whatever that game is, he plays. But just before I went for my walk, I forgot to mention a lady. Actually, I didn't even think of it because I just thought it was a cheap bottle of champagne. But um, a lady was uh, giving out bottles of champagne she didn't want because she said she doesn't like it. And I said, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll take it. I can put in a punch. Right. So this is the bottle here. And then Adam's Googled it. And it's an $80 bottle of champagne. Who goes around a caravan park giving out $80 bottles of champagne? She might have won the lottery. Oh, yeah, she might be rich and, you know. Well, she look inside. There might be $100 notes in it. But, um... If I Googled the right one. <laughs> if Adam Googled the right one. It could be $8. I'll laugh if this is $8. Did you... How can you look up the wrong thing if it's... The label's the same. No, it looks the same. Oh, anyway. If it's $80, it's $80. If you've seen this in the shop for $6, let me know. Because... <laughs> You know what? It doesn't matter because I think it's worth eighty dollars. So when I drink it, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> taste amazing. You'll feel rich. <laughs> I'll feel rich, Adam said. Uh, anyway, I better start cutting up these veggies for dinner. I'm a tad, tad excited. I've got the two burner out, so we're gonna have a barbie tonight. Now, in saying that, it's just Adam and I on the road. We don't have heaps of room in the fridge because we've been travelling. Even though you're only seeing like maybe one night or two nights on these episodes lately, we've been going for a whole week, free camping, pay camping, and um, you don't always, you can't always fit a heap of salads in the fridge for a barbecue. But well, you can if you had some smaller ones. But you know, IGA so they charge a mint for this high premium. But one of our ideas, and you would have seen this if you've been watching us for a while, is we just buy some capsicum, some onion, like a shish kebab, but we just cook it loose, um, and a bit of mushroom, just cook it on there, and then whatever meat we want. Normally we have steak, but they wanted like, I think it was $26 for the two smallest steaks you've ever seen. So we're cooking sausages tonight. We're going cheap. So, <laughs> but... All I'm excited is cooking outside, the weather's getting better, and um, I'm just excited for this summer. I'm just been dying for it. If you had a seen us get ready for winter, we had our winter special, and then after that we camped in some cold, cold times and um, over winter, but we got through it. We camped all the way through winter. It was an experience in itself, and we loved it. So definitely go check those episodes out. Even my nephew Hudson and Jen, my sister-in-law, came with us and we had the coldest night I think we had all winter up at Mount Franklin, but we had an absolute ball and we loved it. So anyway, it's barbecue time. Let's crank this up. Anyone would think that we were four-wheel drive in this van. Look, at this, check this mud out. Look at this. Have we ever cleaned this van ever? I don't know. But anyway... This is what I'm talking about. So just cut up capsicum, onion, mushroom, beautiful. I'm just gonna throw that on. Sausage is there, throw that on, and this is gonna taste amazing. And you know what? You can't go past the smell of onion and sausages cooking. You know, hello Bunnings. Ty was checking out the barbecue from inside. She can't wait to have a bit of sausage. Even though she probably shouldn't have a sausage, but anyway. And uh, this is looking nice and colorful. Look at this. Look at those colours. So pretty. Anyway, I can't wait to eat this. and be yum. It turned out really good. Um, and then we even, like Adam was saying, we've got mashed potato to go with it because we had leftovers. And, um, yeah, I love... This is, like, one of my favourite barbecue dishes. Just, it's just so random. But I love capskin and onion cooked. Um, hey, Twyla, you like that? <laughs> do you like this meal, Adam? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but normally we'd do it with a steak, wouldn't yeah, we? onion's a little bit... Hmm, oh, yeah, because you've never liked it's onion. It's funny, it's like, I like onion. Yeah. I love a bunning sausage with onion. Yeah. But yeah. fried onion, yeah, it's weird, I don't know. Well, that's what um, that's what it is in bunnings, fried onion. Mm. But anyway, you just like the bunnings onion, It might be the onion mine. with the bread, with the sausage, that kind of thing. Uh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, guys, dinner was beautiful. About to go to sleep. We're leaving in the morning... 
But before we leave, there's one little thing you have to do. Nothing major, but I'll let you know in the morning. Good morning, guys. Well, it's not raining outside yet, but the rainies are coming. Um, we're leaving really soon, but as soon as we can. For breakfast this morning, come up with an idea. We had a couple of sausages left over from last night. So I'll show you what we're going to be doing. The same as the other day where we made um, scrambled eggs, or yesterday. Uh, we're going to do the same, but I'm doing these two ways. I'm having my sausages cut up like this and heated up. Adam's going to have his like this heated up. And then after get the scrambled eggs cooked up and the sausages warmed up, we're going to pop them in a wrap and wrap and have a sausage and <laughs> what is it? a Sa sausage, sausage and scrambled egg. egg. Wrap. So Adam's making his first. We're having two each. So he's having half his sausage. And he's got the eggs that we've done in the microwave. Now you can't do this in a pot, obviously, if you're camping, properly camping, not just having luxury of power that we've had for two nights. Mm -hmm. First time we've had power in a while, two nights. And um, yeah, that's it. So wrap, wrap, eat it up. Now time for me to make mine. Yum. They good, Adam? Mm. Good way to use your leftover sausages. Show us the end of it. Oh, yep. Nice, nice. Well, that was absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed that. Be doing that again. Check out this park. There's only like six people staying here at the moment. Six. That's it. How cool is that? So if you come in during the week, there's a chance that you're going to have nearly this park all to yourself. That is so cool. Anyway, I'm about to unhook our power because we're about to leave. Now, one of our subscribers, Michelle, want to know about um, our power and how we keep it safe from water. I'm just going to show you the whole thing. Um, we brought our stuff from Bunnings, our little case that it goes in to stop it from getting wet uh, from Bunnings. So anyway, I'll show you now. So this is where our power plugs in. So I'm just going to pull that out now. All right, and that's one of those. And that connects into there. And then if we come around here, this is the little box that we brought for Bunnings. And this has been outside the whole time. And I forget how much we paid for it. They're not cheap, cheap, but um, yeah, and that just keeps it all waterproof. And then you got the, and it plugs into there. And then this is the other end of the cord anyway. All right, I'm going to roll this up and hit the road. Funny story time. Adam and I thought they had the uh, thing that turns the trains around in this park. It wasn't. It's a bridge. So this bridge has been relocated to here from the station, the original bridge that went over the station. So it's a railway bridge and um, from 1896. And as you can see, it was moved into the park in 1984. So there you go. And here we thought all along, it was that thing that turns the trains around, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's to go over trains. <laughs> no, it's to go over trains, not spin them around. So we're gonna have a walk over this and uh, to say that we've done it. <laughs> Well, this bridge is a lot higher than what I thought it was. But anyway. <laughs> I'm scared of heights. <laughs> I do get a little bit funny about heights. But um, I won't be bunching jumping anytime soon. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, it has been surprisingly amazing how much we've done in such a tiny little town. Mm. Um, We're going to spend one night here and then staying two nights. Yeah, so that goes to show you, you know what I mean? Staying two nights in town where you're going to stay one must be good. So we've really enjoyed it. Thank you for having us. And, and as always, uh, have subscribe, guys, if you haven't done so already, and share it with your friends. And uh, we'll see you next week, Sunday at 5 p.m. See you then, guys. See ya.